got done. Can't put this last piece in here because I don't know exactly where the bed's going to go to, but I thought that those kind of look neat in the corner. I got that guy there. Pretty cool. Neat looking wood. And then I got that there. And then a lot of you guessed it, but the reason that this space isn't filled in here is this is going to be a built-in bed with drawers underneath it. And I've got it about halfway built, so I, I should have it done in a week or two. And then we did the three-way switch. So we got the power source right here. We got a fuse box in there. Looks like a mess. Power goes over into that box and then up here over here and then it goes up the rafter into this light and then down over here oh, it's gonna blow out the camera to that box right there and I can control it from the front door and the back door I'm excited to have that light up there it's been really tough filming at night it's still gonna be tough it's not enough light but make it easier I forget many things this trip. A cup to drink coffee from. All silverware except spoons. Chopping board. So in regards to the road, obviously a lot of water fell down onto it. Had some minor issues with water coming from the very top of the hill. But otherwise, I think it pretty much worked the way I wanted it to. The real test will be how fast does it dry out. So what I'll do is I'll have number fours those are like big baseball size ones. I'll have number fours put on it and then we'll see how, how it goes. I have to spend a good chunk of money on that. Like, I think I'll need at least five loads. Each, each load's 20 tons. Mm -hmm. Breakfast to champions. And then we're gonna start working on the exterior pretty soon. Uh, we're gonna shift gears. Winter's over, it's warm out, it's nice out. Do outside work and then we'll get back to all this inside stuff next winter or Maybe the end of summer if I go fast, but I don't usually go fast. I like the uh, stacking method. You gotta do what you gotta do, right? called cabin trip, chair rail, road work, and DC wiring, I brought power from the battery to a fuse block over to this box. And now we're gonna take, and I put in a switch, now we're gonna take power down through the floor into the water pump. All right. Hold on, we'll check here. Oh yeah, perfect. 
came through right where I thought it would. Exactly the right use for those things, but whatever. We're gonna we're gonna connect these wires that we're running to the water pump mm -hmm. through this switch. So that once we're when we're by the sink and we want the pump on, we can just flip this. Oh. We need to just connect our negatives because the negatives aren't going to go through the switch. So I've got this negative run from the breaker box, and this is the one we just ran. Strip that, put it in this connector That's right cool. here, and that makes that connection. So we can just kind of curl it back into the box. Yeah, just kind of put it back there. There's the red that we just ran, mm -hmm. and we're gonna. What we're gonna do is we're gonna strip the end like so. So now, when you are Oops. actually, so when you flip the switch, what actually happens with the? It turns on the water pump and it pressurizes the water system. So you just. So that's like actually gauged for that size. Water. Yeah, it is okay. color coded. So. Nice. The blue, I mean, as long as you buy the right brand of... What gauge is this? This is 12, but it's like the most that that thing pulls is 3 amps, and it's a momentary draw, and it probably travels like 8 feet, so it's not a big load for the wire size. All right, so now so now we got the neutrals, or the negatives, I always say neutrals, but we got the negatives connected with that wire connector, and then we got the, um, the positive that runs through the switch. Mm -hmm. So then if we go switch out the pump to the 24-volt pump and hook it up, we can we can test it some of these guys on just so we don't have to do it when we're crawling around underneath so this is this is my 24 volt pump the one i have down there is a is an older 12 volt pump that i was using off a car char a car battery charger so i'm just putting this on the end and then crimping it yep this is harder than it looks yeah it's not easy especially it moves on in the last minute and just like test it yeah Good. Cool. All right, these are the two wires we just snaked through. So I'm gonna put these on. But right now you can only switch the pump on from the near the kitchen sink. But it doesn't. I mean, you'll still have like normal faucets. All the pump does is is make sure the system's pressurized. So you still be able to turn the water on from anywhere. Cause it's not like, you know, it's not a municipal water supply. So there's no way to have pressure when your tank is below your cabin other than, other than to have a, a pump. So I've got, what I have is a pump and I have a, a water pressure tank right there. So the pump, we'll, we'll show you when we test it. So we're going to take this old pump out and I'll use it as a spare for my RV. And we're going to put a new 24 volt pump in. Those things just twist. <laughs> You just unscrew it? Yeah. <laughs> Alright, yeah, that's all that is. So this pink stuff, it's propylene glycol. I think it's propylene, might be ethylene. Whatever it is, it's RV antifreeze, and it's in the same chemical class as alcohol. It's also a food additive. I'm not saying it's safe, like I wouldn't say go drink it, but it's not gonna immediately rain death down upon me. And that's just to prevent it from freezing in the winter. This thing is, this screw bit, it doesn't hold the screw in. So every time I finish using it, it falls out. Okay, cool. Old pump out. Here is our new old pump. It's pretty much plug and play. I'm blocking that one. All right, so that, I got a little pre-filter here. This side matters a little bit more. This is a high pressure side. All right, cool. And then I have, 
Uh, not yet, hold on. Okay. <laughs> okay, turn it on. Okay. Ugh. Keep it on. There you go. Tell me when to turn it off. Okay, turn it off. <laughs> Is it off? Yeah. <laughs> All right, turn it on. Short turn on or long? Uh, long. Okay. Sweet. All right, it cut out. All right, so now we're gonna we're gonna run the water out of the pressure reservoir tank, and we're gonna see if the cut-in switch is set right. So when this thing gets down, I don't know what psi, but it's gonna work the water out of this tank and get down to a lower psi. And then we want to just make sure that the pump comes back on, so this water's gonna squirt out right here. Oh. <laughs> It's shutting off at 40. We'll have more drawdown if it shuts off higher than that. Let's see when it turns on. All right, so it kicks in at 30. Is that good? Yeah, that's pretty good because you don't want it to go much lower than that. I'd like it to go up to around 50. All right, that made it, that made it like 45. So would an analogy for this be like, oh. All right, so that's like 47. So I'll just turn it a little bit more. And we don't need to test it because it's working. I'll turn it another half turn. So would an analogy for this be like a uh, air compressor? And yeah. Tank? Okay. Yeah, like see this, see this blue tank in there? It's got a bladder in it. So what happens is it, it just expands the, in mm -hmm. that metal tank because it has a drawdown so that you can use water from like 50 to 30 PSI and the pump doesn't have to run. Instead of like running every time you turn on this, faucet mm -hmm. pump can run for like a minute or 30 seconds it's less start and stop on the pump which uh, okay. preserves the pump's life gotcha That's good. We got a lot done today.